So what happened? I mean, you had in Mexico, he was trying to be a form a, a okay, diplomat, just diplomatic, the and then the red meat. He was just churning it out in the crowd. He like somebody got rocket, into primary red meat mode. Rockets, they were shooting out all over the place. <laughs> he looked for a minute. I'll duck as you throw things at me, like a statesman uh -huh. in Mexico. For he was like, really, I gave him an A plus for yeah, um, I mean, for, for the stagecraft, and I broke Twitter. Ah, no, we did. I said he stood next to a world leader. Right. And, well, wait, hold on. calm down. Hold on. Calm, calm down. down. No the wonder Mexican he's at 23 percent. Well, he is. He is at 23 percent, but. The question the bigger point, that I the had. The bigger point is a stagecraft. Right. Yes. Really he was in bias. Right. And he, look, I mean, it looks like the UNGA backdrop. Right. And he pulled off, what, 25 minutes of um, looking different than normal. But yeah. then that changed. You, 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 we saw yesterday a vivid, vivid, every morning, vivid example of political <laughs> contortionism. Right. It was incredible. In the space of six hours, you had two different people. Yes. Just so incredible. Thank you. So the pro and the problem. This is a problem politically. Is uh, in my first campaign, um, I was way ahead. So my opponent tried to paint me as this right wing, rabid, uh, Christian conservative, which of course no. is a joke. Everybody <laughs> laugh. Why you make this joke? You saying that about you? But you know, I was a uh, the, the 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 right wing. Ralph Reed, Christian Coalition candidate. They use that to scare everybody. And then they would alternately get old clips of where my band had played at CBGB's or whatever and said I was a scumbag rock musician, right? That's closer to the yeah. truth. Yeah. That's yeah. closer to the truth. Yeah. But what, what, what did that do? And I learned this very year on. It was mixed messages. So not only did neither message hit, they worked, they yeah. effectively canceled each one out, and people went, ugh. Mm -hmm. So, and that's Trump yesterday, he's diplomat, and then he's red meat populist, and you're right, it's okay. a contortionist, but they work no. against each other, Willie. So at the end of the day, neither one has an impact. I thought yesterday was a microcosm of his whole campaign, where mm -hmm. he has a flash of mm -hmm. maybe he, this is a guy who looks like he could be president, but he had a long enough history that I don't think many people bought that. He turned to the Mexican president and said, it's a great honor, I consider you a friend. He was speaking in diplomatic terms, mm -hmm. right? but the minute he landed back on United States mm -hmm. soil, that speech last night, if there was any question about a softening, he could not have gone harder. This was a primary speech from last year. He talked about a new special deportation task force. He wanted to leave no question that there is amnesty. There will be no amnesty. If you come in this country illegally, we will find you, we will uproot you, and we will remove you from the United States. So there was a softening in the afternoon. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and Something a happened. Yeah. And a hardening at night. Had him yeah. change I've, things. I've, 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 we get rid of those words the radio. But, but his words, his words, not ours. But, but when you can, we're, we're journalists, and we just yeah. Please don't. When you, that's can, not when funny. you consider the day, though, the the one issue that propelled his candidacy, the foundation of his candidacy. Yeah. He walked away from it in Mexico City, returned to it in Phoenix, Arizona, in the space of six hours, from 4 p.m. Eastern till 10.30 p.m. So can I ask this Eastern, question? I defy you to tell me what his immigration policy Can is. I ask this question of anybody around the table? How do, you, how do you have one issue that is your key issue, which is building the wall? Which is so the stupidest much so, thing I've right. ever heard. So much so that that is the punchline in your rally, right? Mm-hmm. And then you go to Mexico, and you claim you don't even bring it up to the Mexican president. How does one do that? Well, apparently it did come up, so that's kind of but a no, mess but, too. But he's saying it didn't come he up. Said, he said they discussed it, but they but did not, not discuss the payment. Yeah. All right. The well, Mexican payment. president Let's said he walked in and said, me. we're not paying for your wall. But Joe's right, it's, it's in dispute. There are different accounts. I mean, I, I, my understanding is that there were some issues that were pre-wired before this meeting, and, and that was mm. one of them. So, and, and that happens in meetings with leaders all the time. But, with people. Um, with, Don't say leaders. With people. <laughs> okay. With people. But um, the fact that that ended up in dispute before he was even wheels up suggests that like every, you know, like a lot of things he does, it wasn't all buttoned down beforehand. But I think this notion that he had all of his leaders out, all of his surrogates out talking about softening his position, I mean, he made fools of them. I mean, that to me mm. was what left me up watching the whole immigration. He made fools of every single person on his campaign that talked about how he was going to 
soften his position on immigration. All right, let's take a look at this. In joint remarks and a press availability after the meeting, Donald Trump said he and the Mexican president did not discuss his promise to make Mexico pay for the wall. We didn't discuss that. We didn't discuss who pays for the wall. We didn't discuss. We did discuss the wall. We didn't discuss payment of the wall. Uh, that'll be for a later date. This was a very preliminary meeting. I think it was an excellent meeting. So why wouldn't you discuss that? And they are going to pay for it. That's been his punchline the entire campaign. And, it was. and you go down and you talk to the president of Mexico right there. You got him right there. You're both sipping coffee. And you're looking at him and you're going, nice place you got. No, you don't say that. You go, hey, we're building a wall and you're going to pay for it. If that's the center of your campaign, how do you not get the job done when you're there? Because the meeting he was for optics. He said that six hours later. Well, he did. He showed up. And for anyone who doubted it because of what he did in Mexico City, he went to Phoenix and said it about 10 times. Right. 100% uh, well, they yeah, were Exactly. For the but he was just there a couple hours earlier and he had the guy in front of him across the afraid. table. And you know what he was doing? Oh, my God. Can you guys afraid. just stop? He choked. Just think afraid. about this. No, he choked. Just think about like the no, Brent no, no. I can't and the Bob stand Gates people that choke and the under pressure and the Kissingers of the world and the meetings that we've covered. And this is a joke. We're trying to make this into something it's not. Can we please just get it over with? I'm going to continue. <laughs> get, get what over with? What are you this talking stupidity, about? This stupidity. This ridiculous session that uh, right. fringe alt right Republican candidate had with the president of Mexico about a wall that's never going to happen. Please. Please, let's not pretend this is some sort of foreign policy discussion. This is stupidity. Mexican pre well, getting could, it over he with. He couldn't even get it right. I'm getting it over That's with. Well, the only point I'm making is he couldn't get it. He couldn't even, he couldn't get, even it right. get this right. Mexican right. President Enrique Peña Nieto, facing a public outcry over Trump's visit, insisted that he had in fact addressed Trump's demand that Mexico fund the wall. Talking to social media, he wrote at the beginning of the conversation with Donald Trump, I made it clear that Mexico will not pay for the wall. And from there, the conversation addressed other issues and developed in a respectful manner. Mexico's Secretary of Foreign Affairs also weighed in, saying, quote, in meeting, the president was strong in that Mexico does not pay for the wall, position not negotiable. The Trump campaign released a statement saying the meeting was the first part of the discussion and a relationship builder, and it was yeah. not a negotiation, and that would have been inappropriate. It is unsurprising that they hold two different views on this issue, and we look forward to continuing the conversation. So, uh, so after all of that, after the trip to Mexico, this is what Donald Trump said after he was diplomatic in Mexico. This is uh, just sort of a stem winder that he delivered last night, almost trying to prove that the softening that they had experienced earlier in the afternoon and that they had seen in vivid display Amnesty Dawn. in Mexico at, with that from Amnesty Dawn was, was no longer the case. <laughs> right. He had you just flip it toughened up in Phoenix. Number one, are you ready? Are you ready? We will build a great wall along the southern border. And Mexico will pay for the wall. 100%. They don't know it yet, but they're going to pay for the work. On day one, we will begin working on an impenetrable, physical, tall, powerful, beautiful southern border wall. We will use the best technology, including above and below ground sensors, that's the tunnels, Remember that, above and below. Towers, aerial surveillance, and manpower to supplement the wall, find and dislocate tunnels, and keep out criminal cartels. And Mexico, you know that, will work with us, I really believe it. We are going to triple the number of ICE deportation officers. Within ICE, 
I am going to create a new special deportation task force focused on identifying and quickly removing the most dangerous criminal illegal immigrants in America who have evaded justice, just like Hillary Clinton has evaded justice, okay? Maybe they'll be able to deport her. Okay, so uh, kind of confused because you asked Donald Trump if he was going to have a deportation task force back in November. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'll have a deportation task force. And the past couple weeks, they have been denying that they were going to have any deportation task force, all of them. All of the surrogates have been denying that they're going to have a deportation task force. Last night, <coughs> Donald said they're going to have a special, new and improved deportation task force. Mm -hmm. It's so confusing well, for a young minds such I'll as tell ours. You, I'll tell you what. What? I think that the, there's not much to talk about because I think that it's impossible to talk and have a conversation about nothing. I mean, it really is. And he brings nothing to the table. He says one thing, he says another. He is absolutely, there's nothing there in this candidate. But it's make, it makes for some great art. You, you got a great song out of it. Good job. I love it. What are you it's really good. About? Your song, Amnesty Dawn. No, that wasn't it's me. Amazing. I, that was I explained on the Facebook page, oh. Willie and I were in Amsterdam. Well, it was good. For the day. It's good. It gets some good art out of it just, because at this point we you got to laugh. Actually, we were. Who, wow. we I'm going to go to Javier. From Turkish prison. It's a long story. Who came over and pushed so the good. Bar, but we, we'll we play ran, a little. We ran, a, we, we ran into this young man. It's so good. And we get it's a tape. Funny. Yesterday. All right. Let's it's bring so in really the president good. and the CEO really of the United good. States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Javier Palomares. Javier, is there um, a legitimate conversation to have? All about right. That's issue? not the question to ask. No, what I would, would like to know. What, what was your take from yesterday? You know what? It makes for great television, but I agree with Mika. There is nothing there. This man began his campaign on this issue. Uh, the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce collaborated with the George W. Bush Institute on a study that found that net migration between Mexico and right. America was basically 20,000 people in a nation of this size. That's practically zero. So, so Javier, let me and ask in fact, you this it was question 20, more people really leaving America important. going to Mexico than the other way around. What did the chamber, what, what's the chamber's position? Have, have you all figured out, and I'm being dead serious here, what exactly he said yesterday, the totality <laughs> of yesterday, and I'm not even trying to be yeah. funny, yeah. what is his position, is because no he position. seems to be trying to have it all, yeah. throws the red meat out while he suggests that perhaps he's not going to deport families that have been here for 20 yeah. years. What did you all take out of yesterday's events, and what exactly is Donald Trump's position, because the Times and other publications can't quite figure it out. Well, there, where there, therein lies the, the quandary that he's painted himself into. The, he's, he's painted himself into this box. He's damned if he does. He's damned if he doesn't. Uh, he had to come back out and, and really kind of fire up his base. But the reality of it is he hasn't done anything to help himself in terms of growing the number. And so uh, I think uh, he's done for with the Hispanic community. He's never going to see the White House if he doesn't get a significant portion of the Hispanic vote. Uh, I don't know if you guys speak Spanish, but I want you to remember this one word, payaso. Payaso. I was just saying it that really a second ago. It means yeah. clown. Yeah. You know, this guy is, is a complete clown. Uh, I'm really sad for the American people and for the Republican Party. They had an opportunity to put John Kasich, yep. you know, front and center. Instead, they ended up with this payaso. And, payaso. you know, it's a complete waste of time. It is a complete waste of time. We need to get on with it already. The nation has got other things to worry about. Immigration reform is a, is a yeah. monster that he created so he could slay it. At the end of the day, it's not going to change things for this nation as we move forward here. We've got to deal with a broken immigration system system, obviously, but right. it's got to be done in a, in a strategic uh, a fashion that makes sense on a going forward basis to fire up people and get this kind of hate filled, hatred. Uh, you know, right. this movement of hatred. It, it doesn't solve anything. Right. Uh, Willie Geis. Gosh, I Javier, we, we all saw the numbers after the 2012 election and the Republican leadership in their postmortem report knew exactly what they had to do in 2016, which right. was to boost their numbers among Latinos. That obviously hasn't happened. Right. It's flatlined at best. Right. Is there anything Donald Trump could do in the next two months? Absolutely. Given not. all he's said for 14 months that could change the tide. No, absolutely not. And after after last night, that was an extra nail on the coffin yeah. 
uh, he's done for. The, the reality of it is, you know, that there was some great work done by the likes of Reince Priebus and, and John McCain and, and Jeff Flake and John Cornyn and others that are compassionate conservatives that were trying to, you know, broaden the tent and bring a, a broader consistency, I'm sorry, constituency into the Republican Party. Donald Trump has laid all of that. He has laid it to waste, and there's no going back. Wow. That is so sad. It and, is. Uh, it is. And so true. And I thank you so much for, for being on the show. Thank this you guys. Payaso. Payaso. <laughs> word of the day. I can say that. And it, it really does stick. Um, Trump's tough tone took at least some of his supporters by surprise. Overnight Politico reported that several of his Latino surrogates are now reconsidering their support. Jacob Monte, a Houston based immigration attorney, tells Politico he has resigned from Trump's National Hispanic Advisory Council. Quote, I was a strong supporter of Donald Trump when I believed he was going to address the immigration problem realistically and compassionately. What I heard today was not realistic and not compassionate. And Alfonso Aguiar, a prominent Latino conservative who organized a letter of support signed by himself and others, also tweeted, this is how I feel, disappointed and misled. But Trump's supporter and cult, no. Yeah. No, move up. You move know, up. No, no, if, no. If you, if you want, just if you, don't even. If you want evidence, move up the prompter. I don't you, want to read if that. If you want, if you want really documented evidence, will not of put the her on the show. That Donald Trump does live in a parallel universe. There was an element the in his speech last night. Maybe she we can find it. it. It was toward the end Great. when he talked about the first hour of his presidency, what he would do in the first hour of mm -hmm. his presidency, that he would remove. Everyone here who is Ill, he, he is here in this country illegally within the first hour of his presidency mm -hmm. and start we, building the wall at the same so, time. Yeah, if we could find that but, clip, but, I mean, you, you listen to yeah, that and say that he's but, not dealing in reality here. But can I just, you know, what's remarkable is that the other thing in the news today is that he is, he, the polls have tightened nationally and in some of the swing states and he does this this was this will do this will win him not one new vote the this, this speech last night got him the 40 percent of the republicans that are already with him yeah. this morning the polls have tightened a little bit nationally and in in, in wisconsin this speech moves him backwards so when he loses, and I think he is set up to lose, it will be because he could never sort of expand beyond the 40% of the Republicans that he got to vote for him and, and support him enthusiastically. And what he did yesterday was display an ability, 23 minutes of it in Mexico City, to possibly, perhaps, maybe talk to somebody other than the 40%. And he came back and, 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 and sort of whiplashed back to his instinct. But he does this which all is the time. To thrill and titillate the 40%. Yeah. He does this all the time. He plays to the 40%, plays to the 41, 42%. Yeah. And he and then he decides he's going to expand his base. He's done it on guns, he's, but he's done lying. it on immigration, he's done it on all these other issues. And he will go out and then he gets criticized and then he immediately he doesn't have the courage to stay out there, then he immediately runs so, back in. And if I could just say, Alex wanted me to read a story, and Alex, I will paraphrase it without using the name, and that is a person who basically runs a business for herself, fueled on hate speech and hurting people, and is a huge supporter of Donald Trump, loved the speech. It says it all, but a great leader in the media once mentioned to us, actually, not to ever mention this person's name, because people like that have no place, no place in the mainstream so, conversation. He's, he's got... They are hurting America. He's got his hardcore 40 percent supporting him. And but, people like but, that. But he's offended, again, he's offended some of his Hispanic supporters, uh, the few that dared stick their neck out for him, and the college-educated voters that have been staying away from him. Well, I mean, that, that performance last night in Phoenix, I mean, you saw a man who was absolutely willing to be captured and fueled by an audience in a hall, right? Not the country, right? The audience in a hall in Arizona. Yeah, right. that's all he ever sees. That was a speech to me from August of 2015, not from August of 2016. He's in correct. other words, when he's talking, he's trying to win a Republican primary. That's the kind of speech he was giving last year. There's been no growth. That Seems way like maybe he heard year. your song and just got mad and, because he's that small a person and, that and he you would know what, actually respond. What else, Joe? You mentioned that 
his surrogates have been going out saying there's no deportation force. Actually, what people like Kellyanne Conway were saying is he hasn't brought that up since November. And what they said was, you'll have to wait till Wednesday night. What's clear to me now, and including some reporting in the Washington Post, is they had no idea what he was going to say Correct. on Wednesday night. He None. wrote that speech. Those were his words, None. and he delivered it last night. And Willie, nobody until the day right. of had any idea. I don't think I don't think he knew what he was going to say until he left Mexico. Right. I, I really think he yeah. responded to how he yeah. felt at the moment, yep. Yep. which I guess he was tweaked into it. Well, which I mean, is there, a there, wonderful way to, to conduct foreign but policy. The reporting <laughs> in the post is that is that Steve a Bannon and uh, the Jeff Sessions policy advisor, who now works for Trump. Had been working on that speech for a while, so I think people in the campaign knew what he was going to say. A handful but, but of people. I, I, w w having been a spokesperson, yeah. what is startling to me is that he really has made fools of his spokespeople. Kellyanne Conway has been saying since two Sundays ago that there would be a softening in his position. She is largely viewed as a rational actor inside the Trump campaign, she and he has too. made a fool of her this morning. Yeah. And she's pretty good at what she does, she's but he has made a very good at what she does. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.